and one of the guys had a taser, a fan. Oh, After fuck. they apologized about it, but inside a situation where I'm, I'm from Texas or whatever, I was talking to Coach um, Giannis, and he was telling me, you know, you can come here and we can change the culture of a lot of things. You can, you can take your game to another level, but it's going to be every day. Like, I'm going to push you. And so, I mean, once we get the championship, I got a side right here dedicated to the team and stuff, and we're going from there. <laughs> Es esmu sveicināti VEF podkāsta devītā epizoda. Vau, wow, tu skaiti. Nu, es minu. Notīkam. <laughs> ok, uh, Edgars Barbaks, Rūdols Kugrāns un Michael Skaizars. Uh, hi, Michael. Uh, What's up, man? You're going to be our ninth guest in our VEF podkāst. Okay. Uh, I, I, I hope you feel very honored. Yeah. Um, you're in a top ten. <laughs> oh, I appreciate it. You yeah, know. you're probably top ten player in VEF league as well. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how are you feeling now? New year, uh, everything's right? Yeah, first of all, you know, happy New Year's um, to you guys, and uh, thank you for um, having me here. You know, wish you nothing but uh, health and wealth in this Thanks. in this year. And um, overall, how I'm feeling, I'm feeling blessed. You know, woke up this morning um, in a good situation. My family's safe, the team is safe. So overall, you know, everything is good. It's positive energy. Cool. Okay. Uh, Have you ever been in a situation what was uh, during the New Year's? That uh, it's uh, forbidden to go outside. Go outside after time. <laughs> no, I ain't never been in no situation like that. But I mean, at least I have my my family here, and you know, some of the guys came over, so it was just you know, it's always better to just be safe than sorry. So, yeah. all of you like uh, Americans and uh, Finland player from if you live in the same building or no? yeah, we um, well, me and um, KJ live in one building, and then the other building is um. IP and uh, Alex. Oh. So, yeah. Alex the Thor Matson as yeah, I Alex, <laughs> Alex Thor throws down the hammer. Yeah. yeah I, I like <laughs> I like this nickname. Yeah. So But you also learned some uh, this uh, Scandinavic uh, gods names because of him. Oh, because of Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> Marvel for sure. Mostly Marvel? <laughs> yeah, Marvel for sure. Come on, man. Okay, uh, we're going to talk about this season, but uh, in like the first half of the podcast, we want to talk about uh, you, your life, your career in basketball. And like the first question I want to ask, you grew up in uh, Texas? In, uh, yeah, I grew up, I grew up in uh, Victoria, Texas, a small town that's by Houston. And um, I left Victoria, moved to Dallas when I was 13, from 13 to 17. I uh, finished high school and I went to prep school in Houston. So I know that was a lot to explain, but when people ask me where I'm from, I just say I'm from Texas because I'm well-rounded, you know, so. So, yeah, and then the first question for me about uh, you in basketball, everything I know about, like, high school life in Texas is from TV series Friday Night Lights. Yeah. And that's why I know that Texas is, like, really big uh, football state. Yeah. And so why did you choose to play basketball, not football, or maybe you did both of them? I'm not gonna lie to you. I I play. I tried to play football. I was fast. I ran. I was really good at track. But um, going into like ninth grade, I'm not gonna lie, I caught the ball one time and I got hit in the air. Like did a little flip. I was like, now nah, I'm done for. This ain't for me. And my mom was like, you know, should play basketball then. And my brothers too as well. So, I mean, football was made for me. I guess basketball blessed me. So. But when you play football, which position you were a receiver? Oh, receiver. Receiver, yeah. okay, nice. You, now you'll be tight end probably. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure. uh, come on. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, maybe you can explain, like, Christers was here, and he tried to explain. You said you went to the prep school. Yeah. Uh, prep school is after high school, yes? Yeah, prep school is like, um, it's like a one-year junior college. So um, you don't use your, lose your eligibility. You're able to do a year, and like basically you're reclassifying. You're like a postgraduate, and um, that's what I did. I went to Humble Christian Life Center in Houston, the school that DeAndre Jordan went to, and then after that, I was still able to have more offers and get seen by more uh, colleges. And um, I chose Louisiana Tech. Yeah, Louisiana Tech. Uh, everybody knows. Also, Louisiana also big football state. I think. Yeah, <laughs> but, for sure. Uh, but. Like everybody know LSU, Tigers, uh, Pete Maravich, Shaquille O'Neal, yeah. but also Louisiana Tech, uh, Carl Malone, uh, Paul Millsap, PJ Brown, PJ Brown, power yeah. forwards, yeah. and they have this nickname, Dunking Dogs from, uh, from us. Yeah, from, yeah, yeah. We <laughs> yeah. Hate that. And well, those three big power forwards, uh, this uh, dunking culture, because well, what I see, you like to dunk uh, the yeah, ball. For sure. uh, Those were those main reasons you choose uh, this school, and uh, that's honestly, um, like I wanted to be closer to uh, to home, and um, I had 
I mean, if I had to choose, like, I had other offers from, like, Iowa or teams in California. So, I mean, I want to be closest to my mom and my brother. So I just chose Louisiana Tech. And uh, my new car, Malone, went there in Paul Millsap. And uh, my coach, he's a – Coach Michael White, he's the coach of Florida. I was his first recruit. So, you know, we came there and, you know, we – we they gave us the opportunity to say we was going to shock the world. They gave me opportunity to play. So I just went there and – you know, the story is, is over from now. Uh, okay, so you made the uh, Dunkin' Dogs, uh, the <laughs> nickname, but how old were you when you first dunked? Uh, I was uh, 13. Really? Yeah. <laughs> See, I was talking, it's crazy that you asked me, because I was talking to one of the young guys on the team, and they was asking me yesterday, like, how, like when did you first dunk? Like, I, the ball popped out, <laughs> but then I started getting used to it, and like a couple of months later, I dunked or whatever. It was like basically rim grazer. My my dad and my brothers used to have me like use ankle weights to try to dunk the basketball, and I finally got used to it and just doing it. But I was 13 years old. 13 years old, yeah. man. When I was 13 years old, I was like one meter 50 cent, like, <laughs> and you were dunking. Uh, <laughs> because like when I watched like first game, where I saw this season the uh, against Wagner you played yeah. in Latvian league. Still, the fans were there, and like. Your first 10 points, I asked uh, one of the WEF guys, I think Harris, uh, the, I asked, he, does he ever shoot the ball? No, <laughs> Because no, oh, just, no. just dying. Yeah, but the, but you, shoot. Right. You, yeah. you shoot. You uh, shoot mid-range shot for yeah, you yeah. is uh, pretty good. Yeah. And so you went all four years in Louisiana. Uh, th this was your cho choice to spend all four years uh, in college or there were some offers after, I don't know, first, second year to... Yeah, it was always, it was always um, after my second year, I was doing pretty good, but um, I'm not going to lie, I made a promise to my mom. I was the first one in my family to go to college, so it could have been, I could have been a first-round draft pick. Not saying I was, but I could have been that. I would have still went all four years. I made a promise to my mom to do that for my family, so yeah. And what so were you studying? Yeah, what is uh, your psychology, lit psychology and um, liberal arts? That's what I graduated what? in. Okay. Does it help somehow? Yeah, uh, I mean, with the mind, the mental. I'm I'm really good at you know helping people out, you know, in downtime as well as you know family people battling depression. I've done that um, with myself, and um, that's why my nickname is Kai. But it's know yourself. You know, that's what I tell a lot uh -huh. of people: know yourself with your mind and everything that you do. So, yeah. And this is how uh, this also helped for you, like this uh, this education for I don't know your game preparation, how you get uh, because I I watch your Insta I follow you on Instagram, yeah. and sometimes even 24 hours before game you already have this story locked in. Uh, does it, is your preparation for like big games really long, and you are inside of the game like day before that? No, like um, I honestly, I do something that I've been doing for the, for um, a long period of time. I watch this movie. I know it sounds a little weird, but I watch this movie called Above the Rim. Oh yeah, great movie. It's like one of my favorite movies, and I'll watch it, and then after that, I'll read a little bit, and then uh, KJ gave me this app called uh, the Calm app, and like I listened to this lady, and I sat there like she talks to you, get your meditation right, and then like I lock in for the game. Okay, wait. I always miss about the rim. Wasn't no he got game is with Ray Allen, yes. Yeah, about the game. About the rim is above with the rim is with um, it's uh with uh, Tupac Shakur. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. So and you know this film from yeah. cover to cover, yes. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> okay, this is a <laughs> interesting ritual to watch. This My song. favorite is rebound. Have you rebound seen? Rebound. Yeah. Sure. Oh, yeah. the yeah. legend. Rebound. Yeah, for sure. About the legend. Yeah, you're. The gold, the gold manigal, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, the best, uh, arguably the best player who never, never played, played in NBA. Yeah, yeah. you talking about you talk, oh, oh, rebound move when the guy could touch the top of the yeah, yeah, board. the short guy. Yo, that movie <laughs> is elite, though. It is. There are lots of good basketball movies. Uh, yeah. now the, the latest one is with Ben Affleck, where he's an <laughs> alcoholic. Uh, I've seen that high movie. school I've coach, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but good movie. Like, yeah. well, you should see Dream Team. Uh, 1935. You know what it is? What is that? Uh, this is a Latvian movie, but you can actually, I, I can send you an Instagram, you can get it with the English subtitles. Okay. Because Latvia national team is this uh, first European championships. The first European championship in basketball was held 1935. Yeah. Uh, Geneva? Between wars in Geneva, in Switzerland. And Latvia went there and won the, f of course, this was amateurs. No, yeah, for yeah. Sure. Uh, but they won the first uh, European no, championship. Definitely send that to me. Yeah, we we sure. beat Spain in final. 
<laughs> you'd be speed yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. and the scores yeah. were re really because there was at that time in i don't know if it's the same in states but in uh, europe after every basket there was a jumbo what yes after every the, basket the game, there was the, the game was short it had to be like, yeah. like, the, the score was like was 25 short. 20 <laughs> the games <laughs> ended something like that yeah yeah, yeah. no shot clock of course shot clock <laughs> of course but even in states the shot clock was in nba from 55 not the not wow. from the beginning oh uh, yeah so yeah i wanted to ask you i i read your interviews so, yeah you say uh kevin garnett um uh, dennis roman uh with what what players are your top players more of all time? Yeah. Um. Honestly, like I said, Kevin Garnett, like um, Kobe Bryant is my when my dad's um was one of his favorite players. He was growing up in California. Oh, okay. And um, Dennis Rodman, just anybody with really the intensity and the athleticism, you know, just a just a, a beast or a dog, like I would say on the court. Like so, my top five would be, well, my top five players is Kevin Garnett, Kevin Durant, uh, Kobe. Um, Dennis Rodman and uh, Sean Kemp. Not saying that, yeah, just my five favorite players that I like the most. You know what I'm saying? LeBron James is in there too. Of course. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> I'm saying who I like, you know what I'm saying? Who I really like look up to or whatever. So if I, LeBron is listening, sorry, he's yeah, also LeBron, in there. LeBron, you got it, brother. <laughs> yeah. I, got I, it. I always love these discussions. Like, okay, there are some people that like are not big fans of LeBron. Yeah. I understand that, but I don't not like when people say, yeah, I don't like how he plays. No. Like, what? No, <laughs> like, he's a beast. Yeah, he's a beast how you sure. cannot like he can do everything. For he's sure. a point guard. For sure. Okay, but the two of them, uh, Garnett and uh, Rodman, are famous also with their trash, trash talk. talk. Yeah. Have you learned something? Yeah. yeah. That's I, be, I, don't, I don't know if y'all hear me on the court, but I, I I be you know yapping or whatever. Like, and I have older brothers who used to talk crazy to me in basketball. So. I might say a couple of things, you know, and then get inside somebody's head, but then I'm always intense on the court and locked in. But uh, like, uh, we hear you this season. We hear you good because <laughs> no fans. And if we went like in Arena Riga, last play game against Ritas, it was so weird. Like this big arena and you can hear like everything. Yeah. Everything is happening there. But yeah, those players, okay, big trash talkers, but uh, some of them like uh, Garnett, uh, Rodman, there are those like, old school power forwards, yeah. like uh, not shooting trees so much. Yeah. So uh, do you prefer better this uh, basketball that is played now, or did you like the basketball, even as a fan, like I NBA? I like the basketball, like growing up, you know what I'm saying, more, I guess it was more intense, but I mean, now you, you gotta be able to shoot the ball to be able to be seen. Like, I like, it's like I'm caught in between the two, but if I could choose though, I would say like back then, cause you can, like you gotta be, they gotta have heart, you know. What I'm mm -hmm. saying? You can barely touch somebody now, and it's gonna be yeah. a foul. So, yeah, like for me, that that's why. Like, okay, he's a great player, but I don't enjoy like uh, as much watching. Uh, like, for example, Luka Doncic. Yeah, he what? goes. Like he, what? You don't like Luka? No, I like how he's playing, okay, but okay. I don't like these things when he goes to the basket. Yeah. Then oh, he stops, uh, yeah, yeah. and then he puts his butt out to get the fall from the people who is yeah. behind him. That's why, you know. Back then, they would have just looked at you like, this. Yeah. <laughs> up, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why. No, no, he's a great basketball player, of yeah. course. And we Latvians need to like Luka because he plays together with uh, Chris. KP. Yeah, yeah. 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 Sure. Uh, how? Hey. Uh, like, d d which teams you like the most? Like, uh, how you, because in Latvia it's easy. Like, if you live in Riga, VEF is the best team. Okay, we like VEF. Uh, do you, in America, choose the, your favorite team because of the location? You are from Texas, maybe yeah. that's why your favorite team is Dallas, or you yeah. choose because of players? How you do that? I really don't have a favorite team. I just like basketball. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I could, if I would choose, it would just mm -hmm. probably be like the Lakers or like teams in Texas. I mean, really, I don't have a specific team where I'm like, I have to watch. Kevin Durant, I told you, is like, as of right now, is like my favorite player in the league. And, uh, like, I like watching the Nets. So. You know there's a Latvian in Nets? Yeah. I, um, he, he played with uh, Vernis. He, he this is one of his closest friends. I forgot what his name is exactly. Can uh, you, you remind me? Bartant? Yeah. Uh, Davis? Yeah. Is a ah uh, there's in Nets Rodion Skuric. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. played, but now he's more like uh, this. He's deep, deep in the bench. I don't yeah. know. At the end of the day, he's somewhere where some people ain't make it. That's a blessing. You know yeah, of course. 
because he, he actually is really fit for NBA basketball because like the first season for him was really good and he was bench player in Euroleague yeah. uh, for two years and then he went to America and he was much, much better in NBA. And was starting five. Yeah. yeah for, okay, the team wasn't the same team. <laughs> it is, yeah, uh, but anyway. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, so yeah, okay. Let's talk about your. Uh, so after like last year in uh, college, uh, you played 36 games, most of them in starting five, almost nine points, seven, almost seven rebounds, 2.8 blocks, but you didn't get drafted. Yeah. Uh, you you hope to be drafted, yeah. Honestly, I was at a because uh, I I wanted to. I told you I wanted to finish like my School. four years. So um, I left um, after we got done playing and we lost to UAB. I went to um, go with go look with my mom for meet agents and stuff, and I only had two draft workouts. Like, cause I was, it took me that long just to find an agent, and I knew from that then it was probably two weeks before the draft. I knew I wasn't gonna get drafted, but I went to the Raptors workout. I did good. They called me back the next day. I went to the next one. I did good again, and they told my agent, my recent agent, that um, that uh, they wanted to give me opportunity in summer league and. You know, mm -hmm. I knew that I got signed by a partial guarantee over there. But um, I knew I, if I could take it back, I would have just just chose the right agent or whatever. But, I mean, everything happens for a reason, though, you know, so. But, like, uh, how is for, like, uh, American player? Do you – now everybody knows that there's this option to, I don't know, maybe go overseas or – is for somebody, okay, I, I didn't get drafted, so this is the end of my – or no. you knew that you will play basketball? Yeah, I knew for a fact. I, I, didn't, I didn't care if I got drafted or not. It's a blessing. Okay, everybody can be like, oh, I, I know I'm a kid that I want to play in the NBA. I wanted to run track. That's what I was good at, but really I was good at track or whatever, and I wanted to just make it out where I was from. I wanted to be the first person to make it and play basketball from Victoria, Texas, and I did that, you know, so that's my accomplishment. So. Um, I knew for a fact I wanted to play basketball for a living, and, you know, here I am right now. Okay. Um, How that. is it uh, playing in a summer league? It's yeah. uh, Of course, you're playing for the team, yeah. but at the same time, you're playing for yourself to yeah. show you. Yeah. It's what kind some of kind of different is? mindset, it's right? Really, it's really based on the, like, I'm not going to lie to you, summer league is really for, the fight for, like, younger guys. You know what I'm saying? Like, guys who have came out from like first round picks or second round picks. You have to be highly like touted to be inside the rotation of playing a lot. So it's not gonna say it's politics, but you gotta make sure you catch somebody's eye on what you do, you know, so. Okay, but Summer League is just few tournaments. Uh, yeah. Then it's uh, D or G League. Uh, no, G League. After yeah. that, yeah. When it's uh, all over the season, it's, yeah. it's something similar to Summer League. What, the G League? Yeah, yeah. because there's a, a lot of questions about, because there are just some Latvians that play a couple of games in G League. So, yeah, the question is, what is kind of basketball? Is G League the same? Because in G League also, the, you want to win as a team, but everybody wants to show them. Yeah, it's just like you in the G League to try to get your numbers and to get seen. You know what I'm saying? Like you want to be able to showcase you can do something different or show a skill set that an NBA team, which is above you, might want from you, you know? So it's like I just said, you got to make sure you do something. Everybody's trying to get their own. And, of course, you want to win, but people are in the G League to get noticed to get to the league or get over here overseas and top-tier mm -hmm. teams. So so nobody wants to play there? They just want Majority to? Majority of the time, <laughs> I'm not, I'm, I know a lot of guys just be like, oh, I don't want to play in the G League, but I'm going to do it because I don't want to go overseas, you know, if that makes sense. Yeah, because – like uh, Latvia is a big ice hockey uh, uh, country, and we have lots of players that doesn't play in NHL but plays in the yeah. AHL, yeah. and they're they're calling it AHL jungle because you know nobody cares about the team; everybody yeah. just want to prove Wants themselves. To get their points and stuff, yeah. Yeah, and the G League is probably the, the same, yeah, for sure. Okay, uh, why you think that people are afraid to go overseas uh, from states like? Honestly, I, lack of um, information. I don't yeah, this is yeah probably that that's that's probably the main reason. Um, and you would you would think with somebody who hasn't mm -hmm. left outside of where they're from or who who gets homesick easy that they would be able wanted to experience it. Mm -hmm. But a lot of guys are just scared. I knew for a fact um, before my oldest daughter was born, I knew I had to go play basketball to be able to survive and make sure that she was fine. So I went to Lebanon. And, that's one of the worst places. But you didn't I, play there. No, I played there for a little bit. Like, uh -huh. I played there for probably a month and a half, and uh, it was a bad experience. But it was a, it was good on my mind. You know, I had to do it, and like I could have easily been like, 
oh, I want, I'm done playing basketball because they didn't pay at all. But I kept going, and easily somebody could have quit. But, you know, you got to have heart. You got to have heart in this because a lot of people, like, think about the bubble now. And they're like, oh, the bubble is difficult, but you got to realize overseas you're it's in a bubble. bubble. It's a bubble, you know what I'm saying? Like, so. Especially this year, yeah, <laughs> like when sure. the restaurants are closed and everything is closed. Yeah. And then, yeah, two years in G League, you had uh, Toronto Raptors, 905, yes, yeah. and uh, Salt Lake City Jazz, yes. Yeah. And after that, you went to Cyprus. Yeah. And uh, from what I know, the Cyprus isn't like the best league. Uh, no. How was... <laughs> how, wh- wh- because... Your statistics were great there. Yeah. But that, that was because the league was... Mm. The, honestly, I was, I was putting us out of position. It's like on, in Cyprus, it's a smaller league, as you know, and as you just said. And then, like, it's, they put basically all the Americans basically against each other. It's probably one uh, Super Rock player, and then it's like four Americans. Okay. You know, so it's like Americans playing against each other just to try to get to the Greek league or get somewhere else. So I went there for four games. And um, it was really my first start in European basketball. I didn't know anything about it. And an agent was just telling me, like, you know, try it and we'll see where we go from there. And then after that, so, you know, I went to Kimi and then from Kimi to Aries. And so yeah. it's kind of G League for Europe. <laughs> yeah, I would yeah. say probably, yeah, <laughs> for sure. It's actually a team that's in Champions League right now. Uh, the Cyprus team? Yeah. Uh, oh. K- Karavnos, if yeah. I'm not mistaken. Um, they went almost every year. They're like... And that's why they're qualified yeah, for. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, what was, okay, yeah, uh, of course, Cyprus and Greece are really similar to each other, but they're much, much different from Latvia, yeah. I think. Uh, but what was your, like, the first biggest shock, I don't know, in uh, basketball-wise or uh, everyday life-wise when you came to Europe? What was your, like, first things that popped in your mind? The first thing that popped in my mind that was shocker to me was, like, all right, bro, you got to learn how to cook. You know what I'm <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's. I mean, I really, I'm, I'm used. I like to get adapted to like uh, a big, like uh, somewhere that I'm not used to. You know, I'm not gonna say like I had a, a shocker. I think my only thing was I had to really learn how to uh, balance my my daily routine and everything to get everything right. So I just adjusted to it. I didn't really have a shocker at all. Like when I came overseas, I just wanted to adapt with the people that was around me, with that was in that country. A lot of people like foreigners like like myself would kind of come to a country and try to think that they're better than somebody or whatever i just want to be able to um adapt with the guys that's from here or the people that's from here so or learn more about the country if that makes sense yeah that makes sense because yeah. like and i think that this is one of the reasons why are you still playing europe because I heard from latvian coaches from smaller teams that uh, for some young americans uh, this is the problem they come here and they are expecting that it's going to be the same as states and they cannot adapt yeah. and after two months they are back in states and I don't know like yeah. stop playing basketball like, no nah, this I'm trying to I'm trying to go to my legs fall off you know what I'm saying like I I went everywhere everywhere I go I got a piece of the country that's with me like when I came here I usually do it a lot of notes besides the point but I go get a tattoo of where I'm at you know I got my tattoo done right here the mighty duck tattoo yeah I had a question why because I saw it in game why mighty ducks that's one of my other favorite movies. Oh, Mighty of Ducks. course. Everybody asks, like, you like hockey? I was like, I like the <laughs> hockey movie, The Mighty Ducks. You know? I like Disney. <laughs> yeah. But you know that the uh, movie was first. Yeah. Yeah, there was a movie and the team was named after the movie. And Anaheim they're paid. Ducks, yeah. uh, they rights. made a good uh, money and uh, bought the team. Yeah. <laughs> sure. There were actually rumors <laughs> that they are making a new uh, Mighty Ducks movie with uh, the same cast, coach, and different kids. They're... they're Trying to make a new. I want. I want for to see the other that. leg. <laughs> I gotta get this one right here. I'm, I'm waiting to see what I'm gonna do with that. <laughs> uh, so, but the one question about the shocker, like um, you, you played in Greece and the second season in Aris uh, about fans because yeah. European basketball fans, when their fans are you're allowed, right, and you're right about that. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, that is a shocker. Though. I wasn't even thinking about that. Uh, at Aris, I can honestly say their fans are like. You know, they're there, you know, good or bad. And, like, I've said it one time in an interview, like, it, we had an experience where, you know, I'm not talking about it by Irish because they, they gave me opportunity and they, they gave me a chance. But we had an opportunity we lost, and the fans are so, like, it was a bad situation, the management, and the fans uh, came on the bus after we lost to my recent team, Kimmy, and one of the guys had a taser. 
So he was Fans. A, a fan. Oh, they, after fuck. they apologized about it, but inside a situation where I'm, I'm from Texas or whatever, in my mind, everybody's like, hey, yo, you can't do that or whatever. And then later, the fans apologize and stuff. But that just lets you know how die hard they are about basketball there because that's all they have. Yeah, in Greece, like, uh, because we had in our podcast this Latvian player who played in uh, uh, Panathinaikos. Yeah. And he said this, the games between Panathinaikos and Olympiakos often are cancelled oh because... Oh, goodness, yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, because for lots of, like, uh, there are even in YouTube video basketball fans in America, basketball fans in Europe, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. and the same goes in football, like soccer, as you call it. For us, it's football. Yeah. <laughs> why, do, why do they do that? Do you understand? Like, what? Why, why do you call it? I, I always wonder, like, why do you call it soccer and football? Why not just? No, we are calling it. Yeah, no, 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 no. I know you call it yeah. football, but I'm saying why back at home don't we call it? I don't know, man. Because I guess for you, your football was it's first. Football. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Right. <laughs> and still, it's a food yeah, and ball. Yeah, we call it uh, <laughs> football and American football. Okay. That's how we in Latvia are doing. Okay. Like, and the soccer name is because of the, the long socks. That, that's actually, it's that simple. That's why the name soccer. So I, I, I want to Google it. Why, why soccer. And it's because of, uh, no, really. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's makes it's sense. Because of long socks. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. But they're like, <laughs> European. <laughs> no. <laughs> but like European football makes more sense to be called football. Yeah. Uh, no, like, like uh, because we played only with legs. And so, yeah, the question uh what was your idea after because from what i know you don't get like uh, paid so much in g league but after this uh uh second year in greece in uh Aris, you went back to states to play in uh lakeland magics yeah. uh, wh- why you made this deci- decision maybe to get closer to nba again or yeah just um i had um after the situation with aries you know i'm uh, things didn't go out as planned, and I wanted to just try to be back home closer to my family mm-hmm. because I had been multiple years like going away, and um, you know it helped me out a lot. You know I learned a lot from the guys that was there, the coaching staff, and uh, Anthony Parker. You know, yeah, yeah, NBA. he played. You're a really legend. Yeah, and is in Israel. You know, yeah, like, he Maccabi. really he really helped me out a lot. You know what I'm saying? Just with his mental and everything and everything he played, his skill set and stuff. So just having guys like that, they really helped me out, you know, and everything. So uh, it was a good choice to go there. And then, you know, as you know, I came here, so. Yeah, but because, uh, but the, the, like G League is the closest platform uh, for, and because in one interview you said that like in Lakeland, especially in Lakeland, in every game there were people from uh, Orlando organization watching yeah. a team play, yeah? Yeah, I was watching a team play. We had a, uh, we had like a two, uh, two-way two guys um, on the team. I was watching them and then I was watching just the guys around too as well. So, I mean, you put on a platform in the G League, not just by the team that's above you, by any team. You know, mm-hmm. you can do good and get caught up by, let's say you're with the Lakeland Magic, you get caught by the Atlanta Hawks. It just depends on what the team needs, you know? Yeah, uh, the question I want to ask about G League is about um, this um, traveling thing because, like, of course, the N- states are really big country. NBA teams fly with the private jets. Uh, how how is the traveling to away games in G League? Do you go by buses, trains, or sometimes you might go by bus, and then it might just be a lot of flights as well, too. So just regular flights, yes. No, no, it depends because the flights might you might take two flights, it might take long, it might have, might have a layover. It just depends. Like it's not you're not flying private, a private yeah, yeah, of course, jet yeah, like the NBA. You know, it's really that's what they call the G League. You got to have some heart because it's like it's a doggy dog world you know? yeah yeah and the next part in this podcast i really want to ask after last after lakeland magic season uh, lots of latvians don't know nothing about this tournament i know a little bit about this tournament but you play in the basketball tournament yeah. uh, maybe just like a short intro what is basketball tournament? The basketball tournament, um, it was really a $2 million tournament. Um, and I always used to watch it every year or whatever. It's, um, it's like, happening for some time now. Yeah, yeah, it's been happening for the past couple of years. Um, this past season, it, past summer, it was the it was a million-dollar tournament inside the bubble in Ohio. And, um, and as you know, I got to play with Joe Johnson. Yeah, Joe Johnson, NBA also. And, and Bobby Brown. So just being around those guys, you know, the tournament is basically like a, a, a set of guys that just try to get after it for a million dollars, you know. We didn't, we weren't able to get to it, but experience, you know, and just learned a lot from it. But 
But this is like single elimination or there is some groups or... It, yeah, it's a single elimination game. You yes. win, you go... F yeah. yeah. You keep going to the money. Uh, so, but I, I watched in this um, in the website of this tournament. Not, if you win, you played in overseas... Overseas elite. Yeah, overseas elite team was named. Not everybody gets the same share of the money if nah, you win. Yeah, you everybody... Choose. So, my mom was like... Uh, 125,000. If you win, that was... You get it deposited right after you, like, after the game, it gets sent to your Zelle account. <laughs> so that's like, imagine that, though. You know, you're like, oh, man, I'm playing for this. And the next thing you know, after the game is over, you're like, ah, oh, they ain't about to send you. Look, it's like 125,000. <laughs> you know, like, so. Uh, yeah. But uh, how you get recruit, like, how you get on the, this tournament? Because how you get big the invitation, yeah. Yeah, everybody, they, like, recruit you. Like, like you going to a college, they look at you, like, look at your skill set, look what you can do for the team. And I've had guys recently reach out to me and ask me, will I play inside it again? It just depends because I might want to spend time with my family. Mm -hmm. Like, But, um, yeah, they, they, they definitely recruit you, like, coaches, and be like, oh, we like your skill set. You can fit on this team. They'll, what money would you like? And we'll pay for the expenses and – the hotel and stuff, you know, the food, so. Interesting, really. Like, because, like, in Latvia, I, I knew about this tournament, like, two years ago, but uh, Overseas Elite actually won it, like, from two, three times, I think. Yeah, for sure. Uh, how it was to to play together with uh, Joe Johnson? Okay, he's not in his prime anymore, but. Uh, no, he's, he's a bucket. He's tough. <laughs> he's elite, you know, like, he's everything. Big shot Joe, ISO Joe, you know what I'm saying? Like, so. Uh, just being around him and seeing his mentality, you know, asking him a couple of questions, you know. And even though it was a short period of time, it was good to learn a lot from him. But, um, you know, he still can go, you know. Yeah. And, but when, uh, and, <laughs> and why the, the question, is he, is that love of the game? Because, like, for him, I, I think, like, he has nothing to prove anymore. He no. had a great NBA career, all-star. Why he still wants just the love of the game? Why he, he probably just wanted to just get out there just to do it. You know what I'm saying? I think he was like a late addition. Or so he asked to, asked somebody asked him to play, and he was like, all right, I'll play. Like you said, he has nothing to prove. Like yeah. He has probably money put up the rest of his life. And like He's a great dude, great player, and um, learned a lot from him while I was there. And what kind of basketball do they play? Oh, simple basketball, yeah, run and gun in uh, this uh, tournament? Or Yeah, I mean, no, they got plays too. So when I, it's, it's like you really, you really got to have structure. You just can't go out there playing playground basketball. It's guys that's been playing with each other. Like, um, if, if it came down to it, I would have a, if we could, we, I'd have a Louisiana Tech team, you know, like the guys who know each other. Like, you want to go to a team where guys can have enough chemistry to be able to go out there and try to get a W, so. But, like, uh, there was some practice camp before that? Yeah, we had practice. We had a couple of practices, but it was, like, it was uh, during a different time zones because everybody was inside the same hotel, so we had different time slots. Oh, okay, yeah. You know, like a bubble. Yeah. yeah. Okay, interesting. And you... How would Vev do on that uh, tournament? <laughs> I think we'll handle business, honestly. I think, <laughs> I, I, you know, if the guys are watching this, whenever they do, you know, have a Vev. <laughs> but 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 that, that's different, like because we've played together every day, yeah. like and they're our team for whole season. Uh, have you ever played in this uh, or, or some other those uh, summer tournaments? Like everybody knows, Drew League or some. Have you played? No, nah, like I have family in California that's told me like come down and play in a Drew League. Um, I want to get to that. I played in a uh, OVO in ca in Canada though. Um, I, um, ah, yeah, you played. You won it. Yeah, no, yeah, no, Canada. No, we didn't win. Yeah, it. We, didn't. I won the Crown League. Oh. I won Crown League in Canada, but um, um, OVO. You know, a lot of people like Brandon Jennings, um, Stanley Johnson. Like a lot of Toronto Raptors players were playing inside of it. Norman Powell. You oh, know, it was good though. Like it was good, a good runs over there. And then you possibly get a real championship ring after you win it. So it's good. You haven't won a ring yet, not no, in high crazy. school. No, no. Ah. But you have, you will win it maybe yeah. this year. I will hope. That's the plan. That's the plan. That's the plan. I think every every year. Yeah. Uh, so, question about tournament, or we can go? No, I think now we can uh, come to Beth. Yeah, this come season. Come to Riga. Yeah, this, this season. season. Okay, uh, let's start with this uh, the first question that popped in my my mind: uh, How you get recruited here, and how you decide okay let's go to because i think before that you didn't know much about latvia maybe porzingis and 
Uh, no, I actually knew about um Labby. My boy Speedy, uh, Smith, Speedy Smith. He um he told me about it. Um and uh, I was with my agent um Alex, and he told me like this could be a good situation for you. A team uh, has. The, I was talking to Coach um Giannis, and he was telling me, you know, you can come here and we can change the culture of a lot of things. You can you can take your game to another level, but it's gonna be every day. Like I'm gonna push you, and I knew for a fact from learning from other guys that played here, Xavier Thames and everybody, like, I just reached out and asked them, you know, how it was, and they told me straight up, like, you know, he's going to push you, he's going to work you, and that's why I came here. And I looked at the guys on the team, the roster, and I was like, you know, we can do something, you know. Mm. So. But actually, like, uh, I don't know how much you know about the basketball we've played with Jans Geilitz. This actually is a really interesting uh, year for basketball fans as well because, like, Jans Geilitz is, like, fifth or sixth season – and as a web uh, head coach and this year is like completely different team completely different style completely different players no like every year there were like uh, centers like old school centers yeah. really big centers this uh, year no uh, how you feel in this kind of basketball this fast paced basketball with no like really big men and some yeah, of that he he that's that's the one thing he told me he said you're something that we haven't had you know like I know I'm not the biggest guy you know what I'm saying lanky and everything but I can provide with my speed and my athleticism and me being able to uh, bring energy this defense and stuff I know I can change a lot inside the culture and I knew that's why I came here um so you know shout out to coach shout out to the management just give me the opportunity to be here and like you said, the main goal is to win a championship, not only inside this league, but, you know, try to contend to go to Champions League, you know, with the guys that we have. I think we can strap up our shoes against anybody. You know, that's just my mind. So about these guys, like, uh, you didn't know, like, Kyle Alman before this season, huh? No, I knew of him because um, I, I see I know some guys that's in Greece. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, he's... Yeah, yeah, he was... He played, uh, um, when I was in Lakeland, I was just looking at the stuff in Greece, and I seen he was, like, making some noise about him, and... Um, I didn't know IP, um, but I knew of uh, KJ. So, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. But like, so the, the question is about your, even in a, if you go in a Champion League's website, everybody is talking that uh, you and Kyle Alman are one of the best duos. And you can see it on the court, like uh, you throw him alley-oops, he throws you alley-oops, you do everything like this uh, chemistry, f you two guys. All team has a great chemistry, yeah. but especially you two guys on the court, uh, how, how it de develops so fast? It's only your first year playing together, but it looks like you'll be playing from uh, high school together. Honestly, it's just like you say, it's just the chemistry, you know, like the dude, we, um, me and him and like, and all the other guys just play the game, you know, it's like it's certain things that we do together as a team you wouldn't do usually on a team. Like before the season really started, we all uh, went to, we all sat down and let's just like chilled and talk, you know what I'm saying, and play games and stuff with the whole team. And it's like that's where the chemistry started. And the thing about me and KJ, like, you know, he helps me out. He's younger than me, but at the same time, though, he helps me, you know, get to my game to the next level. I told him, I told him, I told everybody, push me. Like, it's not going to hurt my feelings. You know, I told him the same thing because I'm not going to hold back from you. You know, I look at you as a little brother. Mm -hmm. I'm 29 years old, and it's He's like – He's a 20 23. 23. 23. So I look at you to the point where when I was 23, I was just coming to play professionally. You got a year under your belt. So I told him I want everybody on this team to take this – take their game to the next level, and usually you don't see that. So I said you got to hold my hold me accountable. I'll hold you accountable so we can take this to the next level. Like – uh, for, for him, he's only 23 years old. For like second year, like the ceiling in his career, I think the highest, huh? Yeah, for sure. He can play Euroleague definitely. I think even maybe and yeah, no, because he's like the first step. I never he's so, quick. and also uh, like all of you this year, Wef people from Wef said that you have like also really high work ethic. All of you guys, yeah, and that's I think also no, not one person on this team doesn't have work ethic. You know what I'm saying? We we. If we see each other slacking, you know, coach, of course, would get on us, but we're going to get each other as well. Like, but you're not going to see that because everybody wants to take their game to the next level. That's been from the jump. That's why I came up with the motto one time. I was like, lock in. Mm -hmm. And I was just saying it just being me, and then everybody mm -hmm. like was like, we're going to just live off that. We're going to lock in, you know, so. But it seems like uh, that's this year is the year when you have uh, the – 
so much practices and uh, so not so much games. N- yeah, not so much games. How how it's uh, with that? I think every basketball player wants to play, yeah. not just practice, practice, I practice. I think it's just the mental though, because it's like like oh man, we got it's just the way that you approach it. Like you know, you go to practice every day to get better. Like you, you can't just go to the games and like we can we play against each other every day in practice, competing. Like we get mad. We get mad to the point where we like, all right, you got to chill. Coaches, let's say we go one and one one day in practice. We'll be like, nah, let's play, let's play to see who can get two. And coach will be like, nah, like, we're going to say that for tomorrow. So, like, he does that on purpose in order to bring it to the next day and just to play with a lot of energy and, you know, play with heart. So, What can I tell you? Maybe you don't know that, but uh, <laughs> of course you know, but if there was not pandemic, the – the championship together with the Estonian teams would be much, much better because yeah. uh, Estonia also have two, three uh, really team, competitive yeah. teams and it would be much, much. But like now you have to play uh, six, seven times with uh, Latvian teams. Hey, I, I honestly, I'm just happy that I can be on the court. You know, a lot of people be like, oh, well, we got to play the same guys again. Those same guys can beat you like Ogri did with us, you know, like thinking that we were just going to go inside there and just – like Coach said, he was like, just go inside there. Like, we're going to win now. Like, this is our fourth time playing them. Like, you need to come with some heart or they can take your heart from you, you know. So, mm. so okay. what happened uh, in a game against Ulagra? That was my question. Yeah, and yeah. How, <laughs> and the, the second question, the, like two questions, combination. Like, what happened and how you as a team, as a player, get over this game before a uh, very important Rita's game? Honestly, like I just said, we just, I guess – it's like it starts from well, I guess we started from the beginning just they threw the zone at us and you know we run zone and practice and stuff but we just wasn't making shots and mm-hmm. then Skelly had just went down you know mm-hmm. so that was a little that was a hurt to us and then we just wasn't making shots and they just they had the they wasn't missing and it was one of their better games and they got the best of us and after practice not at practice but after the game um coach like pointed everybody out like who's gonna take this, you know what I'm saying, who's going to take the accountability and, you know, guys like came and raised their hand and said, you know, it was me, it was me, said it as well. And I um, was like, you know, what are we going to do about this? Because if not, we're going to get beat by Retis, you know, very good team. And um, On paper. Just, yeah, <laughs> for sure. Um, but um, we knew for a fact, we was like, all right, we just got to lock in. Like, we got to go to this next game. We can't dwell on this because if we worry about this game, going to this next practice, we gonna get beat, and we knew that was, was mm-hmm. something that we didn't want to do. So we just got over it and then prepared after we watched film the next practices and got to it. Yeah, how do you think what's happening in like uh, this? Because when I watch when we watched the game, uh, read the swift. This was like completely different stories on the field. Maybe you don't have so big names in Europe in the past, but you played uh, I don't know lots of heart and uh, read the team looked like. The guys don't want to be there. They played really lazy defense. They played lazy in the offense. I, uh, what's, did, did you maybe talk with some Ritas players after the game or something? What's happening there? I, I honestly don't know, and I ain't going to lie to you. not trying to sound rude. I don't, I didn't I don't care. care. <laughs> I didn't care because I knew if we didn't hit them first, they was going to hit us. And we, we, you already know, like, we play Strasbourg next week, like, yeah. We wasn't going to lose like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, we had to come, like, we had to come with it. We beat them one time. We knew for a fact we could secure one of the top two spots if we handle our business and beat them. So, we knew if we didn't hit them, they was going to hit us. We had to rebound, do what Coach said, and then, you know, we came out with the victory. Yeah, this was the rebounds was the – because in the first quarter, every uh, even missed shot, if you didn't get this offensive rebound, uh, somebody of F at least touched the ball. Yeah. Like, and in the second uh, part, this is like, it actually looked like the some of the players of Ritas just, ah, I don't want to be here. Like That's where you that's where you see that instinct. You see somebody like, oh, man, I don't want to, you got to go after them because they're going to do it to you, you know, so. About the first uh, and the only one uh, lost in the Champions League, that uh, final seconds, Almost uh, perfect situation. Our tallest guy uh, yeah. against the shooter, yeah. and in that moment he made that shot. You felt it gonna well, it, I, be in, I, or I, I can actually sit here and say now, like I, I felt that. Like I watched that whole game after. I was like, you know, a lot of people would be like, oh well, it wasn't it was me? You know, like I was anything could have happened before, but that took my 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 mindset and my game to the next level because like. 
If I didn't, if I don't hit nobody now, I think about the first game. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's like if I don't rebound, which my rebounds have gotten better, I think about the first game. So, like, it's easy to try to dwell on that, but it, I'm not gonna lie, it's helping me take my game to the next level. And the guys on the team, they they don't make it easy on me. Like they hit me, make me make sure I'm boxing now. Like we got some 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 strong guys mm -hmm. inside the post with Alex and um, Arnold and IP. So. You know, those guys make sure they push me and like every day, like that's our thing. We gotta rebound. If we don't rebound, then how are we gonna win games? Even if we don't win every rebound game, we gotta get close to try to take them close okay. to the boards. You know what I'm saying? So our oh, roadman would like this mentality. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh so what what do you think is the the goal for you in Champion League? Okay, the first step is to you still are not one hundred percent out yeah. of the first yeah. group, but uh, What do you think? Uh, can you because this is your first year? Iris played not in Champions League. You yeah, played qualification. We, yeah, we we um we qualified qualified to play um Champions League, but we lost to uh, Nizhny. So we played FIBA Europe. FIBA Europe. So this is my first year in Champions League. And so, uh, okay, what do you think about this level? And what do you think? What can WEFs actually make? I don't know if everything is good. Final four or something like Final eight. Any, anything is possible. Now you said it first. You said final four. You final four. Like, so. <laughs> <laughs> let's say it's final. Yeah, the yeah. final, the top. And then know? everything can happen. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's make history. But um, I honestly think, like you was asking about Champions League, Champions League is one of the, like, besides Euro League, you know, a lot of Euro Cup teams is coming down Champ to Champions League. So um, you see Amar Stoudemire played in Champions League yeah. and a lot of NBA guys. So. Now you gotta. It's a, it's a. It's good talent in Champions League, and it's a good um, competitive people. So, um, like my main goal, I said this before, just to win a championship. I know I might be reaching too high, but I'm gonna make sure I'm climbing to it. And I know the guys feel the same way. Like we feel like when we're healthy, we're one of the better teams, and that's not me being cocky. That's me being confident with my guys. So mm -hmm. that's the main goal to try to get a championship, not only inside this league, but, but in, in Champions League as well. Uh, what do you think about uh, now about your teammates that are not uh, uh, are from America or Finland, but Latvians? Uh, now you you played against a lot of Latvians in your team are a lot of Latvians. What do you think about Latvian uh, basketball players? What is the uh, I don't know what characteristics uh, that comes in your mind? I don't know tough players, good yeah, shooters. That's the so main thing. Tough, tough player? players, tough. You got to be like a lot of Latvians that I've played in this league are tough. You know, like. They don't care. They're gonna they're gonna hit you, and that's you don't want to play in no soft league. So I'm the type of guy I'm gonna try to hit you back. You know, like so, I give respect to the Latvians in the league. They play hard. They play with heart. And somebody somebody might say that teams in Latvia aren't good, but I mean any team in Latvia can beat you if you not don't if you're not on top of your your job. You know what I'm saying? So play with heart. They play with ambition, and then they you know do it. They get to it. Yeah. Uh This question uh, I want to ask you, if you have like a uh, choose between, uh, because Euro basketball is different than uh, three, five minutes in NBA or 20, 25 minutes in Euro League, what you choose? That's, that's old. I'll probably choose Euro League, honestly. I mean, just to play, yeah? You want? Yeah, just, I mean, it's all about making sure I'm helping the team. Anybody can look and be like, oh, I'm in the NBA or whatever, and I'm close to the home. Okay, that's, that's another option, but what am I doing to help my team or – Am I inside a situation where I can, you know, take my game to the next level? So I would probably say Euro League, but in the back of my mind, I Still probably NBA. might be like NBA too. Do you watch Euro League? Yeah, yeah. I watch Euro League. I watch, I watch a lot of Bayern Munich and um, I watch a lot of Olympiacos and Panathinaikos. Bayern Munich this year is a really good team. Great yeah. coach. Uh, uh, I forget his name. Yeah. Trinkeri. Uh, he's yeah. a coaching legend in Europe, actually. The one with the long hair? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a really weird guy because we had on podcast one. Ex WEF player Latvian, he used to play with Trinkeri. Yeah. He's a weird guy. He doesn't care in his life only basketball. Yeah. He doesn't have family, nothing, just basketball. Every time he's just doing watching videos, doing new tactics and something, just living in basketball 100%. Yeah. But now there's basketball all night long as uh, NBA started. Do you watch also NBA? Yeah, I watch basketball also. I get some. I get some of the um, some of the websites from uh, the PR guy on our team. And uh, I try to watch a couple of the games until I fall asleep or 
Like, I know, like, some of the guys on the team, it's not the same, but we have a, a Vet Fantasy League that we have. Oh, so, you play? Yeah, the guys on the team made a Vet Fantasy League to try to see who's going to win. So, we do that, too, as well as watch the NBA game. What was your f first draft pick in fantasy? Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant. Okay. <laughs> well, no, he's, but he's actually, he will be out he's now. He's out for four. I might lose this week. You know, I'm upset <laughs> about that, but, yeah. Head to, you playing head to head, yes? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, because I play, too, with friends. <laughs> I didn't get. But you ten. also play uh, Counter Strike. Hunger. No, no, you play, play PS Five. Yeah. Call of Duty. Call, oh, of, Duty. Call of Duty. Call okay. okay. I'm really see. I'm really like. I'm really elite. Like NBA 2K. I, I will play against anybody. But I play for my shoes in NBA 2K. <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah. Call of Duty. I leave that to like Alex or like IP or those guys are really different. And or KJ guys are really different. Okay. Uh, yeah. Let's make the bet. I uh, we're gonna do it here at some time where you will be uh, free time okay. after the games. I will bet you to NBA 2K games cool. to one game. Right, okay, let me know. I'm with it. Okay, right. because I'm getting pretty good now. <laughs> <laughs> and buy bigger shoes. What? <laughs> buy bigger shoes. No, 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 not shoes. We we will think of something. <laughs> you are really good in 2K, eh? Yeah, I'm, I'm really good. Yeah. Okay, because I'm now learning. I'm not good. <laughs> I, I want to challenge myself to higher level. <laughs> Yeah, I need yeah. to do that. I, I want you to think about the question we need to ask, like uh, about Latvia outside basketball. As you see, I like your daughter was here in. Uh, it was her first snow in her life, maybe. Uh, she, when she was, when I was in Greece at Aries, um, she was able to experience snow, but she was like one years old. Yeah, he doesn't. You no, know, now it's her first time like throwing snow and stuff, so knowing what it was, and it was a great experience to be able to you know have her around it, you know, as well as my lady. So it was all good. But uh, uh, outside this thing, but how you enjoy Latvia, people in Latvia, outside basketball. I love it. Honestly, I love Latvia. And I said this in on one of my other interviews when they first asked me, like, a lot of people can say that you can't say that you don't like nobody if you don't get to know them. So I, the Latvians and, and the country in whole, I love it. Like, it's quiet. The people here treat me nice. And, um, like, but when it wasn't cold, it was actually like a nice little vibe, you know. Mm -hmm. I was able to go places and sit down and stuff before it was locked down. So overall, like I love it here. Hey, cool. Uh, as a like um, my my main profession is comedian, uh, and I want to ask which of Latvians are the most funny in the team? Who tells the most jokes in the team from Latvians? Kedix, uh, eight. Artist uh, Ate? Yeah, he is. Uh, <laughs> he is he really is, uh, because yeah. he seems like a Him? quiet guy. No, no. no. <laughs> it's him and it's Arnold. Really? Arnold is hilarious too, though. Yeah. Because from outside, it seems like there are the two most uh, quiet guys. Like, no? no, not a chance. Okay. <laughs> nice. Do you have some pranks you remember, maybe in a in a team? Um, we talking about just uh, from recent teams. Like, do I remember? No, no, in ref. Or from recent teams. Oh right? yeah. Are you just saying? You said, do I have friends on the team? No, no, no pranks. Do you do some pranks to each other? Maybe Ate? I don't pranks? know. Pranks? Yeah, what you pranks. Uh. Nah, he ain't do no prank. <laughs> no, <laughs> nah, we don't do that. You leave the young guys alone, yeah? No? Nah, I actually was thinking, so I was talking to one of the younger guys. I said, you know, in the NBA, I said, they had me. I said, DeMar DeRozan and some guys had me go get some donuts. And James Johnson, I said, I had to get them. And um, it was nothing bad. But I was like, I should make y'all go get some donuts and stuff. Just <laughs> playing around with them to see what they say. Wear a pink backpack or something. But overall, nah, it's no prank. Oh, it was him. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, and then these questions, some last questions I want to ask. Uh, so you said, and it's it's still on. This thing is still on. You promised in one TV inter interview that you will. I already know. Yeah, I'm getting I'm getting the tattoo. <laughs> <If> you, <laughs> but that, no, but the thing I want to specify. Oh, sorry, my Is bad. this a uh, only Champions League title or? Uh, no, I said a championship. Championship. It'll, it'll be my first championship. So I mean, once we get the championship, I got a side right here dedicated to the team and stuff, and we're going from there. There is a place still, yeah? On the side, yeah. You're not scared? Like, you're only, like, 29 years old, yeah? Uh, at some point, there will no be places to do tattoos. No, nah, I'm good. I ain't going to touch my face. Already, I'm good now. I'm, I'm good where I'm at. You know, <laughs> okay. I got a business behind this. Oh, yeah. And uh, this one thing I wanted to tell, I forgot when we talk about the first shock in Europe. Do you know that uh, for lots of Americans I knew from somebody who played in Latvia, there's this weird thing. Uh, you know that in Europe, after you lose in the, like, our league, domestic league, in Latvia league, if you lose semifinals, it's not going to happen to you guys. But yeah. you know that there is this series uh, for third place. 
Nah, I ain't know that at all. Yes. I, I don't know nothing about that. I'm with oh, In almost sure. every Europe League, and I knew this story like some 10 years ago, uh, one of the Latvian teams lost semifinals, and those American guys are packing the bags, and they said, mm. what are you doing? You have to play four games for third place. What? That's his Europe, man. <laughs> nah, no way. Not a chance. No, <laughs> no, no, it's not going to happen to you this year. It's <laughs> finals, but still, it's happening in Europe. So, yeah. No, I definitely didn't know that at all. For real. So beware. And so even in Euroleague, even in Euroleague, in Final Four, there is a third game place uh, game. Do you, I wonder how they, in like Euroleague or something, like how do you feel? That is true because I've seen that um, and when the Champions League, I did. I see that they, they did play for a third yep. place, um, the team in France. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but, but had, have you had some uh, problems also with other rules adopting when you came to Europe, for example? Have you tried to take time out when you're on a on a court? Yeah, because yeah, it's I happening. I definitely did that one time. And I, I'm, I just had a, I was like, they jumped in the ball, and I'm like, hey, time out, time. <laughs> the ref started. The ref started laughing. He was like, you can't do that. I said, I heard my bad, my bad. I did. I just my first mind. I definitely did have a brain for it on that. There's also no jump ball. Uh, like after, uh, if if oh, you yeah, no, no, no jump ball, ball. yeah, you usually would think that, but nah, that I think the only time I really messed up was when I tried to call the timeout jumping on the ball real quick. Okay, and the last question: uh, What is this one thing you want to work to get better? This uh, first thing popping in your mind, you 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 know that I, I can I'm weak in this uh, part of the game, or I can be much better. I think I can be much better with my um. My shooting, shooting. You know, just shooting threes. Like, of course, my mid range is, is pretty good. But just last year, I shot like 34, 35 from three. And this year, I've just like faded away from it. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, coach isn't telling me don't shoot him. He's just like, you know, stay confident and just be ready. So just get him, getting that back, shooting threes. And overall, I would say that and just being more of a, a – I am a leader on this team, but being – take it to another level, you know, pushing yep. the guys. Shooting. So – Good luck with that. Thank you. Yeah, good luck in this season. Uh, so I hope because, you know, we are working as long as web season is going, you know. So You're just uh, here for a minute. Yeah, just yeah. let's go to final eight. I think this is final eight this year. Yeah, it's Champions final League. eight. It's That's, yeah, so good luck in this season and see you in 2K. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Yeah,